So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Korea Defense Veterans Association's webinar about the KDVA internship program. I am Colonel Retired Steve Lee, the Senior Vice President of KDVA, and I will be the moderator today. This webinar will be in two parts. In part one, General Sharp will thank the interns and conduct a roundtable discussion on ROC US Alliance topics with our interns. We would appreciate questions from the audience. So you can submit questions at any time using the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. Please keep the questions short. Then General Sharp will depart to close out part one. In part two, we will open the floor for audience members to ask our interns questions about their experiences as KDVA interns. This part should be especially valuable for prospective KDVA intern candidates. Deadline to apply for the next year's internship program is September 18th. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce the KDVA President and Chairman. General Skip Sharp was the four-star commander of the United Nations Command, Combined Forces Command, and U.S. Forces Korea from 2008 to 2011. He describes this position as his dream assignment for many reasons. Paramount is his deep love and commitment to South Korea and the ROC U.S. Alliance. His deep connection with Korea began with his father, then Lieutenant, Earl Bill Sharp, who fought in the Korean War with the 48th Infantry Division in the Heartbreak Ridge to Punchbowl area. Bill Sharp came home in 1953 to see his son for the first time. After three years as the KDVA President and Chairman, General Sharp will step down at the end of September. He was one of the founding fathers of KDVA, and his work with KDVA and the Alliance continued his decades of devotion to the Alliance and our veterans. We will certainly miss his vision, passion, and leadership. So ladies and gentlemen, General Sharp. Well, good morning and thanks everybody for joining us. Um, it really is great to be here today. And uh, especially great to be here with the first class of KDVA interns who really have done a great job and are an awesome group of young, smart, motivated college students who truly, do, who truly do care deeply about the ROC US Alliance and their part in it and how to support uh, and honor troops that have and are serving in Korea. You know, I've really loved everything about this program. It started as an idea about how can we get more younger people involved in the Korea Defense Veterans Association. And so creating an internship, internship program was the first idea of and really it came from Steve Lee, who you just heard from. He created it and he ran it. We really didn't know what was going to happen when we first brought this out. Who was going to apply? How many people would apply? How were they going to be able to contribute? Uh, because the plan from the very beginning was 100% telework on research interns and some on-site support for our event, our event coordination interns. And as we all know, because of COVID, how that turned out, uh, those unfortunately were very limited. But this group of interns that you see far surpassed uh, all of my expectations. Now you see four of them on the screen now, and I would really like to say my sincere thank you to KG Hong, Julie Huynh, Miriam Lee, Nicole Ruiz, and Stacy Shoten. Each one of you have been fantastic, uh, really a model class uh, to kick off this program and you really contributed a lot to Korea Defense Veterans Association and helped us to be able to spread the word on the importance of the Alliance and honoring those who have served and are serving in Korea. You've researched, you've interviewed, you've written, you've done translation work, you've helped KDVA at events in both Korea and in the United States. You've worked aside, alongside and with senior leaders of the ROC US Alliance, and you've helped spread the word about the important work that we are doing for veterans and for Alliance. You really have contributed greatly to both the Korea Defense Veterans Association and more importantly, strengthening this ROC US Alliance. Uh, I am confident and I really hope that uh, each one of you really got a lot out of this. I know, as I said, just said, you've really helped KDVA but hopefully this has also helped you, uh, given you, giving you experiences and connections that will help you in your studies and in your future careers. 
I really do hope and ask that you stay connected with the Rock US Alliance. You stay connected with Creative Defense Veterans Association. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And please let us know at KDVA how we can help you in any way in the future. Uh, you've greatly helped us and we are committed to helping you in any way that we can in the future. So again, thanks for everybody's hard work and dedication and I look forward to the questions. Sir, thank you for your uh, encouraging words. Uh, I'd like to start our round table by giving our interns a chance to ask you a few questions and we'll, we will field questions from our audience again on any Rock US Alliance topics. After that, we will say farewell to General Sharp and conduct the second part of our webinar focused on discussing the KDBA internship program and answering questions about their experiences. Okay, so uh, first question from KG Ong, who is in Australia. KG, take it. Hey, it's a great pleasure to meet all of you. And uh, Mr. Sharp, thank you very much for your service. And it's been a great honor working under your leadership as a TUSA back in 2011 and working as a KDBA member towards our mission to further enhance our alliance. Uh, my question to you is, other than this internship program, what can we do more to get younger generations, like people in their 20s and 30s, to get more involved in our mission? So, great question. And uh, we at KDVA are working hard to be able to, to do that. Um, I, I think the, the way that I we're pushing to be able to do it, and I would recommend, is is it all starts with education. And what I mean by that is, you know, people in their 20s and 30s, as you say, um, they are, I, the most of them that I talk to care much more about than things than just themselves. They wanna get involved in important missions. They wanna get involved to be able to help give back in, in many, many different ways. And I think one of the ways to spur them on to get involved in how to, help strengthen in this important alliance and to honor those who have served is education. Why is this alliance important? What, how is it involved? What, what, um, what, what is it doing today? What has it done in the past? And then understanding that education from an educational perspective, then to be able to point them to organizations like ours and others that are, tr that are trying to do things to help to continue to strengthen the alliance. Um, you know, I think we learned a lot uh, in, uh, in this COVID period about how we can connect people from around the world and truly do work together on missions and projects um, and education types of things. And, you know, things like this and Zoom, they're very easy to get on and they're very, can be very focused on a specific topic or something like that. And so I think those are the ways, but again, I go back to, it starts with education because I'll just speak from the American perspective, the US perspective, uh, their understanding of Korea, their understanding of the Alliance um, and the importance of uh, Korea and the Alliance uh, is, is far below what it, what it needs to be because Korea and this Alliance is so important to, to the United States. Okay, KG. And sir, thank you very much. Now we go to uh, Julie Huen. She's in an undisclosed location somewhere in the United States. Julie. <laughs> uh, I'm currently in Washington State. <laughs> but don't tell anybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, uh, thank you so much, General Sharp, for your part in this internship program. Uh, I wanted to ask how you fell into this line of work and what keeps you motivated to keep pursuing this kind of work. Yeah, so uh, as I think was pointed out in my bio, I graduated from West Point in 1974 and uh, really didn't have a plan one way or another of staying in for 37 years like I did, but every assignment that I got was exciting to me and uh, I was able to, I think, contribute in those assignments and it allowed me to, and my wife, to travel around the world to many different countries and see many different cultures and and people that are all trying to do the same work basically is to defend their country and to be able to further the goal of freedom and democracy and human rights. Um, so I stayed in for 37 years and I was fortunate um, during that period to have two assignments in Korea, one 96 to 98 
um, and, and then from 2008 to 2011. And um, I immediately fell in love with the, the way Korean people care, the way they really remember what US troops did for them and working side by side with them during the Korean War. Uh, and so it, it really, it, it, you know, like I said, I served in many countries around the world, so many different great militaries around the world, but there's no place that honors and, and helps and serves with US forces as well as Korea. And there's no place around the world where we're more combined in nature, working truly side by side as combined forces command and combined divisions. Uh, there's just no other place like that. Um, so it was very easy and natural for me to, when it was time for me to retire in 2011, to say, hey, I want to continue to do what I can to help support this important alliance, help to support um, the soldiers who are serving there. And it, um, it you know, I, I started off by doing certain things like being a member of the, the, the Korea Society, which is a nonprofit organization up in New York City. And then, um, I, I don't know, around what, 2015 or so, somewhere in there, 16, um, we came up with the idea and it really st started coming from the former defense attache, General Shin, um, came and said, hey, we, you know, we got Korean War Veterans Association who does great work to honor and remember those who fought in the Korean War, but there's been so many defense veterans that have served in Korea since then. We need to put an organization together to be able to help honor and remember them and to help continue to educate people to strengthen the alliance. So KDVA was born out of that idea and we are where we are today making great progress I think in both of those. So that's a long answer to your question but the bottom line is I the importance of the Korea-US alliance is very high for me and the love for Korea and this alliance is is very very important to me. Oh, great points and uh... Um, thank you, Julia, for the question. Uh, uh, just a uh, programming note for our audience. You can start by ask, asking questions using the Q&A tab. Uh, we've got two more questions from our interns, and after that, we'll go to the audience. So uh, Nicole, who was in uh, Florida getting her PhD. Nicole. It's good to see you again, General Sharp. Good to see you. Um, so my question is, you and many others in this organization have such a long history of supporting the ROK US Alliance. For us interns and others who are interested in working with the KDVA in the future, uh, what advice do you have for us to continue our involvement and even encourage others as we move forward in our careers? Um, well, thanks for asking that question. Um, I think that this, this really involves, I think, two aspects. Um, the first is, to, as I said before, help spread the word about Korea Defense Veterans Association. Our mission, the opportunities um, that you've learned while being an intern, things that you've learned here as an intern, but just what we do, um, point them to you know, the great website, which all of you have worked on in one form or another, and the Facebook things that go out to be able to, it goes back to, as I said before, education on the importance of the Alliance and what is happening in Korea, and also all of our different programs that uh, we have now from things like this, the webinar to the journals and all of that, because you know we've tried very hard and been, I think, moderately successful getting the word out on KDVA and what we do, but there's a lot more work that needs to be done there. And it needs to be done you know, all across the United States and, um, and, uh, and in the Republic of Korea. So, so I'd say that'd be the first is, is to help uh, is to help by getting the word out about KDVA and what we're doing. And then secondly is you all are, or are and will continue to be very successful and you'll continue to want to, to attend events and seminars and, and continue to build on your knowledge of this alliance and the importance of the alliance. So I ask you all to keep us informed, keep KDVA informed, uh, through Steve Lee and others on the events, the seminars, the things that, that you are come across 
that you might that you would say, hey, KDVA may want to be involved in this, um, or or mm -hmm. that you out in Washington State say, hey, something's going on that I think is really interesting, and let us know, and we can let our members know that are out in you know the local area of Washington State um, that hey, did you know this important you know seminar or whatever is happening or this this uh this this a thing to thank veterans is is happening in your area and you you can go if you would like to so i think kind of a two-way street of of um of spreading the word and then helping us by really trying to figure out where are different things that are going on you know we are we have we're, we're trying to expand more not just being washington dc and seoul but around the united states and around korea um we have a goal of establishing chapters in different parts of you know different regions of the United States that's been kind of put on hold because of the COVID. We decided to expand and build the chapter while your virtual is totally virtual is is probably not a good idea. But I think we'll be able to start moving forward with that in the next year. So so again, spread the word and keep us informed. I think are the best ways that you could help us and help your help you all as you progress in your careers. Okay, so thank you very much. And so our final question from uh, Stacy Shulton, she's in Korea staying up late with us. Stacy. Thank you. Well, first of all, it's nice to see you, sir. Uh, my question is, as a person who hasn't been involved in any way with the Alliance before uh, this internship, uh, do you think that Americans and Koreans who aren't veterans or who don't really follow the, R the Rock US Alliance have a role to play in the Rock US Alliance? And if so, what is that role? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, you, you know, in, in many ways, uh, Koreans and Americans are linked. And I think that's becoming, it's been true for the past and it's becoming increasingly so in the future. And it's just, it's not just from a military perspective. Um, you know, if you take a look at the, the many products that we have, uh, you know, I have an LG TV, you know, the, an LG phone, some Samsung things, you know, there's cars, there's phones, there's TV. So I would be willing to bet in virtually every American house, um, there are Korean products of one type or another. Um, militarily, as I said, we are fighting together. We have fought together around the world in Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, off the coast of Somalia, and UN peacekeeping missions around the world. So, and, and probably most importantly, especially to folks like you're talking about who aren't veterans, who aren't in the military, um, both countries truly do believe in freedom, human rights, and democracy. And I go back to my first comments about education, about the importance of alliance. It, it really gets down a large degree to that, that both countries have common beliefs, common fundamental, uh, you know, things that is important to both countries. And they're helping spread the word around the world, really, the importance of freedom, human rights, and democracy. So, you know, from those different senses, I think, U.S. and Korean people are linked. Um, and so, you know, finding out more about the alliance, but not just from a military perspective, but looking at it dip diplomatically, you know, we've mm -hmm. talked economically as far as, you know, the products and all of that. Informationally, how do we work together to be able to help spread mm -hmm. freedom, human rights, and democracy, and of course, the, the military side. So I, you know, from my sense, I think all citizens, whether they know it or not, they're, they're somewhat involved because of the, the products and things that we do. But when you get to folks like you all and folks that are, you know, want to study and understand the, the world better, you, you, you get in to start looking at areas where what countries really have the same values that the United States do. How do we work together diplomatically and militarily around the world? And you know, I, and I think that is important for for you know a great part of, of both countries. So, I, you know, I'll end it with kind of as I started. It, it's just education uh, to a large degree on what we 
as an alliance are doing and can do in the future. So um, we need to, need to continue to work to help to keep the, the alliance strong. Okay, um, thank you panel members. Now, now I'd like to just uh, open the floor for uh, questions from our audience. Um, the first question is, uh, uh, the Rock US Alliance uh, has been together for 70 years uh, since the start of the Korean War in uh, 1950. Uh, and currently we're facing uh, several challenges, uh, everything from the COVID-19 worldwide pandemic to uh, North Korea, burden sharing, alliance issues, et cetera. So sir, um, what do you think as we move forward uh, here, as, as we close out 2020, very challenging year, uh, what are the biggest challenges and what are your, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, um, the outlook? Well, I, I think the, probably the biggest challenge that the Alliance, and I assume that's what you, your, your question is yes, around, the, the, the biggest challenge that the Alliance faces is just, I mean, we kind of talked about it throughout this, this whole seminar here, is, is, the, is the understanding of why this Alliance is important today and how the Alliance shapes things, not only on the peninsula, but in the United States also into a, into a large degree in many different places around the world. Understanding the contribution of alliances in general, but this one, which I think is the strongest alliance in the world in general. So, so it's that continued education to be able to have that, I think, and to be able to continue to push that forward continues to remain, is now, and I think remain, will remain to be a challenge. Um, I'm, optimistic that not only because of folks that are like that were on this webinar but folks at kdva and and really i think people who understand the importance of globalism understand the importance of alliances around the world they appreciate the importance of the alliance but to keep them engaged i think will be a challenge um, from the other perspective that we have not talked about at all so far in this webinar is I, I think a challenge for the Alliance is now and will continue to be for the foreseeable future in North Korea and the threat that North Korea mm -hmm. brings um, on South Korea into the Alliance. North Korea is continually trying to split the Alliance. North Korea mm -hmm. has continued to build both conventional weapons and, and, and I believe nuclear weapon development also. Um, and uh, you know, throw on top of that an economy that is in very poor shape uh, and potential, you know, food shortages and all. Um, there could be some real, there. I, I, I think that there will be some real challenges in the upcoming immediate future uh, about what North Korea will try to do to be able to survive. So preparedness for that to continue to, to try to deter North Korea from provocations, but ultimately to be prepared to defend against any type of thing North Korea could do as far as an attack type of thing or instability in North Korea, um, the alliance will be absolutely critical in that. Okay, sir, the next question centers around uh, crisis management. Uh, we did it, uh, uh, our first webinar in KDVA back in June uh, about how CFC leaders uh, handle crisis management. So. Um, as we get a uh, ramp up uh, within uh, eight weeks of the uh, U.S. presidential election on the 3rd of November, uh, there's speculation that North Korea might do some sort of provocation. Could you sort of uh, take us behind the scenes in CFC uh, when you were commander about how some maybe perhaps principles of crisis management and some things that uh, um, the insights about how uh, CFC um, goes about making decisions and recommendations to both South Korea and the United States uh, decision makers? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, I've tried not to make a whole webinar out of this again because uh, it, 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 it uh, is a very well established and I think works very well um, process. But you have to start from the basis that drawing armistice today on a daily basis, it really is South Korea military who is defending South Korea against uh, any sort of of provocation, whether it be from the air, the sea, or or on on the land, it's it's South Korean forces that are on the DMZ that are flying planes that are sailing their ships out there, and so those are all controlled by the Rock Chairman and, and his staff. 
the Republic of Korea chairman and his staff, and they have an op center that continually watches into North Korea, watches what they are doing. And then CFC, uh, the role that we do now on a day-to-day -day basis is, is, is we help provide some intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. But we also have an op center that an intel center that also watches very closely what North Korea is doing. And of course, all of both of those are shared completely between the ROC JCS and, um, and Combined Forces Command. And when I say watch, what I mean is we have a set of many, many, many indicators. And it's not just movement of troops or where things are and what North Korea is doing and listening to them from a military perspective. We also kind of watch it also diplomatically uh, and economically. And, and you know, what is North Korea saying? So you can c combine all of those different indicators together and you know, some smart people who understand what North Korea is doing and has done in the past, I mean, on a daily basis, look at them and say, hey, North Korea is ratcheting up in this area. We might want to ratchet up our readiness a little bit, or we might want to watch a little bit more in this specific area. And because we're a combined alliance there, we, should we work those problems together between the US military that's there and the Korean military that's there. And so we make joint decisions between uh, Combined Forces Command and ROC JCS as to, okay, where are we gonna now shift emphasis or add emphasis and add additional capabilities, all going back to hopefully what we do help just deter North Korea from doing things. But if not, it also helps us prepare in case they do do something to be able to, to very, very rapidly re react. And as we discussed on the first webinar, so that series of looking at those indicators and warnings and all of that happen over time. And if we ever get to the point where we believe it's imminent that, okay, we truly are li very likely to go to war with North Korea, then both countries make the decision to uh, give operational control to Combined Forces Command of all the forces on the peninsula, uh, Korean and U.S. and United Nations Command uh, to some degree anyway, then really the primacy of the command that goes to Combined Forces Command, there still will be a ROC JCS center, but then that's where the ROC, uh, or that's where Combined Forces Command uh, takes charge and, and again, working together with the Republic of Korea makes decisions on where to move things and where to look and where to add emphasis to. So it's a very, we've been doing this for decades and decades and uh, it's practiced uh, for real on a daily basis. It's practiced at least twice a year um, on a basis that takes us through that whole process of kind of where we are situationally today to increased and increased provocations to the point where CFC takes over and, and uh, we exercise how to defend against uh, you know, North Korean attacks. Well, great, sir, thank you very much. So uh, we have a question from a former senior Katusa from the 35th Air Defense Artillery Brigade back in 2011. Uh, he was talking about how um, you know, there's some concerns about uh, US uh, anti-US anti settlement uh, in Korea. Uh, so there's a, obviously an importance of persistent education uh, to make sure that people truly understand the meaning of the ROC US Alliance. Uh, in this sense, what kind of events, not, not always uh, online, is KDVA planning and what role should uh, research interns play exactly? Let me just uh, add one point to that, sir, before uh, we go to you. Uh, so different kinds of things that we do, uh, one of them is the, a quarterly uh, journal. And uh, we have a uh, call out for um, articles. So, you know, you, uh, the senior Katusa, if you have an article that you'd like to write, uh, certainly uh, welcome your opinions and uh, we'll publish them. It'll come out at the beginning of October. And this final quarter uh, journal uh, is gonna be focused on the Combined Forces Command because the uh, anniversary of Combined Forces Command in, is in early November, okay? Uh, we also have a, uh, a monthly newsletter uh, we also uh, do uh, events, again, uh, whenever the uh, global pandemic lifts, we have uh, events both here in uh, the United States and in South Korea. Um, so uh, there are uh, things that we try to do uh, that obviously isn't just online. 
Uh, General Sharp, sir, anything to add? Yeah, just a couple of things. Um, first off, the online thing. I, I think even when COVID is, you know, we're all are vaccinated and, and it's beyond us. Um, we will continue, I believe, to do many things online and webinars. It's, as I said, I think in the opening, one of the opening parts here, it is, um, it's very, it, you know, you could set up a webinar to focus on a certain topic very, very easily. And it's very easy to participate in these webinars. You just you know, turn your computer on and you're there. And it truly is participating. Um, you know, depending upon the number of people that are there, everybody could be, you know, live and on the screen. I've done webinars, believe it or not, that have had live little boxes of people, up to 36 people um, on the on the screen. And you have to have the right rules of like, when can you talk, but you can make all, all of that work. So I think, you know, as we at KDVA move forward, as far as looking at, you know what sorts of programs that we have this this mechanism of webinars can be very focused and be very very powerful um, having said that i also do believe that it's very important that when we can we get back to face-to-face -to -face types of things and uh, to be able to have seminars and uh, and conferences and dinners uh, to both educate and to thank our service you know educate people on the importance alliance and thank and honor and remember those who have served is is very important. So we'll continue to do that also. You know, Steve mentioned the, the ability and what we've been doing really with Steve's leadership of gathering articles, putting them together in, in journals and putting out a monthly newsletter on what's going on, what's on the website with, you know, the different, you know, chronological events of what the important things that are happening in Korea and you know, where memorials are around the United States and, you know, interviewing people for, you know, keeping, keeping their record of what's happening in the Alliance. All of those are very, very important and good resources also. So, you know, we, we value your all's ideas um, about what can be done to, to help strengthen the Alliance and honor those and how KDVA can play in it. We're, you know, as I said, we're looking at different chapters around the United States um, and in Korea, but we're always open to ideas. Uh, and uh, we all, I think, have the same goals. Well, sir, thank you very much for, again, taking the time to be with us today. Any uh, closing remarks? So let me just close kind of with where I started in, 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 in both sense. First off, to the interns, to each one of you all, uh, thank you for your hard work. You have truly made a difference. I'm absolutely confident in two things, that you will continue to work to help strengthen the Alliance. And, and each of you will be very, very, very successful in each one of your selected careers. It's clear to me you have the drive and the education and the smarts to be able to do that. And I was sincerely, I'm very sincere when I tell you that there's something KDVA can do to help you. Uh, do not hesitate to ask and ask you to stay involved and and uh, and do that. So, and to the whole audience, uh, again, you know, ask you to help spread the word, um, not only about KDVA, but the importance of this Rock US Alliance and the importance of those that are serving there. Um, as Steve said, uh, you know, I will step down from being the the chairman at the end of this uh, at the end of this month and turn it over to a, a much more capable commander, uh, General Vince Brooks, um, who has the uh, the same drive and motivation that uh, that I do, and and a lot smarter than I am, uh, to be able to take KDVA to the to the next steps. I I really believe that in organizations like this, it's always good to every several years to change over to the leadership, so new ideas and fresh ideas can come in. But uh, but don't take that as any indication that uh, you're not going to see me around <laughs> because I do plan on staying greatly involved with the Korea Defense Veterans Association and for sure staying involved with the, with the Korea U.S. Alliance. But again, thanks for all who joined uh, on this webinar and most importantly, thanks to each one of you interns for the great work that you all have done. Thank you. Sir, we will uh, truly miss you as you leave KDVA. Later this month, uh, we wish Joanne and you all the best as you take over as chairman of the uh, Military Officers Association of America, or MOA, 
the largest military officer organization in the United States. So again, thank you very much. Okay, thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> okay, intern. So uh, now uh, let's get to the uh, second part of our webinar, um, and we're going to go right into it. Uh, let me ask a, a question uh, for Julie. Uh, why did you choose to intern with KDVA? Um, so I personally, uh, I wanted to a chance to learn more about the Rock US Alliance and the work that Korean and American soldiers do to protect and deepen ties between the two countries. Uh, and KDVA seemed like a great organization to work with. Um, I actually heard about this from Nicole. <laughs> and <laughs> I think the people so far have been really, really great, especially you um, and also the fellow interns. Um, it seems like we're a pretty diverse group, even though our main interest, our main tie is uh, our interest in uh, Rock US Alliance. Yeah. And I'm really sad that my year is ending. Um, so I think, I think that this is a great internship for anyone to apply to and just to get to know more about, uh, yeah, the Rock US Alliance. Okay, wonderful. Uh, for audience members, you can uh, uh, ask any question you want about the internship program uh, with using the uh, Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. Uh, next question is to Nicole. Uh, how has KDVA impacted you in your year of internship? Uh, so I think the, the biggest thing that it did for me was it kept me focused on my research interests. Mm -hmm. I actually started in an economics doctoral program and eventually found my way into the the politics and international affairs. And I think the, the internship really helped kind of cement that I should be pursuing a career in that discipline as opposed to economics. Um, so while I, stu I, I still plan on doing some research involved with economics and I really appreciated uh, being in the economics department while I was there. I, I think I'm, I don't think I could pursue a career in economics purely. Uh, so the KDVA helped keep me focused on that aspect of my career. Okay, wonderful. Uh, so uh, for Stacy, how did the internship match your expectations? Uh, so honestly, I didn't really have a lot of expectations in this internship only because KDVA is such a new organization. Um, and this was the first year for the program. Um, and because it was the first year, I think it was really easy for us to really play to our interests um, and sort of mm. be creative. Mm. I've done a lot of other internships. Um, compared to those, it was pretty flexible. Uh, Mr. Lee, you were always very good with making sure we knew when the deadlines were, but also looking out for us and making sure that we didn't feel overwhelmed with work. Um, I was, last year I was able to help out with some events in Seoul, but this year, obviously, due to COVID, uh, that didn't happen. And so in that aspect, it, it didn't match my expectations, but that was something that was unavoidable everywhere. Yeah, I'll tell you, uh, 2020, <laughs> with uh, the COVID pandemic, just horrible, and the impacts it has in everybody's lives. And I particularly just have been really impressed by how y'all um, um, weathered through it how you made adjustments and how you continue your studies uh, as well as contribute to KDVA. So just amazing work. Um, so uh, this is for Nicole, Stacy, and KG. Uh, what was your favorite experience? We'll go with Nicole first. Um, so I guess my favorite experience was getting the opportunity to interview both General Sharp and General Shampo uh, about their, their fathers and how other fathers influence their their careers. Mm. Um, it was a nice step outside of academia and having to write articles that have a million and one citations. Um, so and I also got to know them on a more personal level, which I feel is something you don't often get to do in terms of uh, upper leadership in alliances. Mm. And I think that's also important for an important aspect of the KDVA getting to getting to know the individuals that support the Alliance and lead the Alliance. Okay, great. Uh, KG. Uh, 
my favorite experience was to assess in assist in hosting KDB's last year event, uh, the first former CS commander and deputy commander forum, which was co-hosted by Korea US Alliance Forum or KUSOF. Um, there I got to see firsthand a constellation of high-ranking officials from the US and Korea, lots of generals, diplomats, members of National Assembly, etc. Uh, when bodyguards from Korea's presidential security service came in and standing 20 feet away from me, performing their duty, uh, I was awestruck, <laughs> um, intimidated a little bit, and also by the level of importance of the event I was there for and helping and assisting it. Uh, even I, I even had the honor of participating at a lunch meeting of former commanders and deputy commanders as translator. Uh, after the forum, I was assigned to write up a forum report, which was to be distributed to the mm -hmm. Korean government agencies and departments. It was a very challenging task, but I was given a lot of room for autonomy and responsibilities ranging from hiring services, putting together a team and managing the workflow. As much as it was challenging, it was rewarding and fulfilling. So through this assignment, I feel like I developed strong management skills, which is quite a unique experience for an intern. So I gained a huge sense of achievement from this experience. So that's why the former CFS commander and deputy commander forum was my favorite experience. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Okay, Stacy. Uh, so like KG, uh, my favorite experience was helping out at the first former com combined forces command uh, forum. Uh, unlike KG, I specifically enjoyed the actual event itself, <laughs> although he was the person in charge of actually putting everything together afterwards, so I didn't actually have to suffer that much. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, but what really, what I really enjoyed about it was the fact that because I have no experience with the Alliance or anything like that, uh, it was kind of eye-opening and enlightening in terms of the level and I guess, yes, the prestige and everything that goes into the Alliance. Um, I learned a lot about the history and the operation of the Alliance, uh, which might have been common knowledge to people who were there already, but for me, uh, it was all very new. And my favorite memory is that I was briefly introduced to the current US ambassador to Korea, Mr. Harris, and he said I was the first person from South Dakota that he had met. I was happy to be able to represent my <laughs> state as well. <laughs> but, yes, uh, thank you for that opportunity. Oh, yeah, wonderful. You know what's going to be amazing is uh, when you get an opportunity to meet uh, Ambassador Harris again, uh, don't be surprised if he does remember not just your face, but that you came from South Dakota. Uh, he's got a remarkable memory and so those kind of experiences you're going to have for the rest of your life. So yeah, no, I appreciate that. That's a funny story. Uh, so this is to uh, KG and Stacy. you know, how did your experiences relate to your studies, KG? Uh, I would say very significantly. Um, right now I'm in the last semester of my 10 and a half years master's program at Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia. I'm doing a double degree in interpreting and translation and international relations. So thankfully, the job descriptions for the KDV internship was very closely related to uh, both of these majors of mine. Uh, as a translator intern, I translated KDV monthly newsletters. And as a research assistant, I got to write on articles for the Alliance Journal on topics of East Asian politics, which I studied through uh, my program. Learning from my studies and applying that knowledge to my job and vice versa was pretty much what I've been doing for the last year. And this bilateral interaction was very helpful on both my career and academic ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Um, so Stacy. Uh, again, unlike KG, I don't have a background in this. My major is library and information science. Um, but that being said, if there are any of you out there who are wondering if you should apply to become an intern because it's not really in your field, I would say as long as you have an interest uh, in the KDVA, in the Rock US Alliance, um, in Korean veterans, go ahead and apply uh, mm. because Mr. Lee is very flexible in terms of letting 
you sort of choose what you're interested in and tying it with uh, the Alliance and with KDDA's um, mission. Uh, so, for example, I interviewed Mr. Tong Woo Kim, who served as the chairman of the Katusa Veterans Association from 2011 to 2018. Uh, and I'm personally interested in that because of my father, who uh, was in Korea in 1984 to 1985. But it, it's not related to my career. Um, mm -hmm. So I would say, even if, if you're interested in it, go for it. Um, because there's always... The whole mission of KDBA is to get people involved in the Alliance and to educate people who don't necessarily already have that information. And so you are their target audience. And so this was brought up a couple of times uh, by several people. Um, you know, KDBA greatly values uh, ideas. And, you know, uh, we know they're out there. And so if you're listening here, uh, um, you know, please, if you have an idea, uh, just uh, send us an, a note um, and we will certainly take a look at it. It's amazing uh, that, you know, someone's bright idea at KDBA gets implemented. Um, and uh, anything that we can do to help the Alliance is what we're after. So, yeah, I appreciate that very much. Okay, uh, let's see here. Okay, this is uh, for uh, Julie and KG. Has this internship changed your views about your future plans? Kate, I'm sorry, we'll go with Julie first. Um, so before this internship, I don't think I was truly aware of just how important the Rock us Alliance is in shaping mm -hmm. peace and security in the region. Uh, but now because of my time with KDVA, I'm considering careers that more directly impact the Alliance and hope to make relationship, relations between the two countries stronger. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't figured out what career that is yet, but uh, I'm still looking and hoping to work with the Alliance. Yeah, and if it's anything to deal with, obviously with Korea or the Alliance, uh, political military uh, issues, uh, you know, you always have a good home base here uh, to uh, ask questions, uh, ask for letters of reference, uh, things like that, so absolutely. Okay, KG. Uh, yes, the KDV internship program gave me a, gave me a clear vision about uh, my future plans. Uh, before this experience, I just had a only, I just only had a vague idea about my post-graduation plans, like working for, hoping to work for an organization with an international focus, hmm. like the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or any international organization along that line. But now I feel like I gained a heightened understanding of the importance of the Alliance. I'm strongly motivated to work in the field relating to promoting the Alliance. I still have a few months ahead uh, before I graduate, so I'll keep looking, but KDV has helped me build a bridge with organizations that can offer advice uh, on a career path that I can take. So I, I would say uh, this is the change in my perspective uh, towards my future plans, uh, which was facilitated by this KDV internship program. Okay. Uh, one more question coming up for uh, Nicole and Julie, but uh, I want all of y'all to think, uh, you know, was there any unusual uh, story or a funny story uh, from your internship, uh, anything surprising, um, uh, anything you learned while you were interviewing uh, General Sharp or Shampoo that you didn't put in the article that you want to broadcast to the rest of the world, uh, Nicole. Uh, so just think about that. I'll, I'll come to that. But uh, for uh, uh, Nicole and Julie, so uh, what are your plans after completing this internship and graduating from school, Nicole? Um, so after I graduate from, from my doctoral program, I'm hoping to stay in academia to some respect, um, either as a university professor or even at the community college level. Mm -hmm. uh, that way I can continue to do my research. But a big thing that I, I took away from this is also not staying isolated in the bubble of academia. I think that's sometimes a bit of a problem because there's, there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect between academia and what practitioners want and what kind of information they need. Yeah. Uh, so, so being involved in these types of organizations um, as I pursue my career in academia, I think 
is important to, to reach that balance because a lot of my research has to do with methodology and it's very theory based, but I want to make sure that even though it's theory based, that it's practical, that it's useful mm -hmm. to, to those who, who need it. Okay. So Julie, what are your plans after completing this internship and graduating from school? Um, so I just graduated from undergrad from Middlebury College, uh, and I'm I'm currently remo working remotely at uh, two think tanks. Um, one is in California called Center for Terrorism and Extremism and Counterterrorism, um, and I get to use some of the Korean stuff that I've learned. Um, and the other one is in DC called Center for Advanced China Research, uh, where I do research on U.S.-China relations. Um, but in the long term, I really hope to work within the Rock US Alliance um, and to realize that goal. I'm currently working on my Korean proficiency. <laughs> and um, I'm probably either going to continue doing research or uh, if my language proficiency ever gets good enough, I hope to move towards uh, translation interpretation. Um, and if KDVA ever has a job opening, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> I actually, you know, uh, that's not a shameless plug uh, because you know, one of the things that uh, KDVA is looking to do every year is to continue to grow. Uh, and uh, certainly we'll continue with this uh, internship program, but uh, uh, as our uh, interests and our programs and events uh, uh, increase, uh, next few years, hopefully we'll also have uh, uh, paid positions come open. So Julie, we will certainly uh, stay in touch for that. I would also obviously encourage you to stay in touch with uh, KG and Stacy. Uh, KG in particular, because uh, he is actually going uh, to get his uh, master's degree in uh, interpretation and translation, uh, which is very important to do. Uh, and uh, Stacy, for those of you that don't know, uh, she probably speaks Korean far better than uh, I do. So. Stay in touch with them. Okay. Um, okay. So let me just ask you: Do y'all want to share any uh, unusual stories, funny story, anything that that was odd that came up, uh, something that uh, wasn't covered here? Or just raise your hand if you want to do that. Uh, this is one of those things where it's okay, Stacy. Let's go. I can start. It's not really related to anything, but also okay. at the forum, I met. I have lived in Gangwon-do in, in the northern province in Korea uh, for two years before. And at the conference, I met a person who actually lived in the same town as me, um, which is unusual because there's not many foreigners in that area. And so that was, it's amazing how small the world really is. Um, through this program, I didn't expect to meet many people that would be, have something in common with me, but yeah. turns out, Everywhere you go, there's someone who will be somehow related to you. Yeah, yeah, wow. Uh, that's actually pretty amazing. If if y'all were any uh, mathematicians uh, or statisticians, you could calculate the odds. It would probably be astronomical. You should have probably gone out and bought a lotto ticket. <laughs> <That day. laughs> okay, anybody else? I know y'all have some stuff. Nothing, nothing unusual or funny. Anything crazy that I did uh, or asked y'all to do? No? Okay, they're all, you know, because they, you know, they, we're not finished yet. If we had done this on the 2nd of October, they'd have a lot of dirt. Uh, <laughs> but hey, um, as we close out here, I, ju I just want to say uh, the things that you, uh, the audience has heard about the KDB internship program. Hey, if you're in doubt, you're on the fence, just apply. Just go to our website, kdba.net, and just apply. Uh, you'd be amazed. Even if you're just sort of interested in the Alliance, uh, even if you sort of just want to do something that's different outside your career field, or you are really into the Alliance and you want to just meet the uh, movers and shakers in the Rock US Alliance, both Korean and Americans, I tell you, this is the internship to do it, not just because you know I'm running it, but uh, you heard over and over again from our interns the flexibility. This is uh, for our research resistance. It's 100% uh, online. Uh, I have literally not met any of our interns that are here on the screen. Okay, I've not shaked their hands yet. We're going to do that in the future. There's no doubt about that. It's just 
you know, we just haven't done it. They're all over the uh, United States, around the world. Okay, so again, uh, if you want flexibility, uh, if you want to be stretched uh, by uh, me giving you some uh, things to think about and research, uh, please do that. And then again, as soon as we get past this crazy pandemic era, uh, and we're able to do physical uh, events, both in uh, South Korea and in the United States, all over the United States, um, you know, this is a place for actually being able to go and meet people, participate in events, see how they go. It's actually pretty fascinating and interesting. And oh, by the way, you'll meet people that, that you probably only have seen on TV or read about. And oh, by the way, uh, if you need something later on down the line, don't be shy about asking them for help. Okay. All right. So um, I just really, really want to say that uh, this webinar, you know, will be available on the uh, KDVA.vet digital library uh, and the uh, KDVA YouTube channel just in a few days. I would really like to thank uh, General Sharp uh, and our KDVA interns. Uh, KAG, raise your hands. So people know who you are. Julie, uh, Mary and Lee, she's at uh, Penn State, not able to join us. Uh, Nicole and Stacy, uh, really each of you has done great and lasting work for KDVA that will help our service members and veterans and the Rocky West Alliance. Uh, thank you to our KDVA members and our supporters for allowing us to do this work. Um, one of the ways that KDVA will continue to advocate for them and their work is by hosting a webinar series focused on the experiences and contributions of Korean defense veterans who took the mantle of the Rocky US Alliance from our Korean war veterans and have been carrying that uh, torch for seven decades since the signing of the Armistice Agreement on, in uh, July uh, 1953. The first in this new webinar series will be Thursday, uh, September 17th, a week from today at the same exact uh, time, same channel. So again, we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you, everybody. And uh, please uh, be safe out there. Thank you so much for conceiving this internship program and for letting us have this experience. <laughs> Wonderful.